towards the back end of my career, I, uh, I'd had two knee rec reconstructions. I was playing reserves footy, a bit of senior footy, but playing a hell of a lot of reserves footy and understood that it wasn't going to last forever. I was, I was only uh, 26 when this was going on and I realised I had to do another uh, career outside of footy and um, through that 25, 26 year old period got involved with the AFL Players Association with Alistair Clarkson, learnt some very valuable skills working with Andrew Demetrio in that space collective bargaining agreements um, with the AFL, all of that, which was, was really stimulating and I re thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, that really helped sort of formulate some views on, on marketing and media. I got a better understanding of it. I didn't have a great feel for that when I was a player. And so it was an invaluable period to be able to step a, away from the football club environment, still be involved in football, but get a whole new perspective on on things outside the game that really made a difference. I was 28 when I retired. I was lucky enough to play in a premiership in my last game and it was my 200th game. So it was, it was a good time to retire, but it was 28. But it was, an, it was a pretty easy decision. I was working, I had a great job. Um, working with great people, I was learning all the time and so it wasn't a hard decision for me. I transitioned into my post-footy career really easily. 96 when I didn't play, he brought me onto the coaching panel and, and I was, uh, had a role in the coach's box on match day and, and that's when I first got my uh, first taste of, of, of coaching, what it was like. I, um, I enjoyed that. Dennis thought I had a had a role to play with the players and help out with the coaches and, and I did that through 96 so I got a bit of a taste of it then. I did a coaches course um, with David Whedon um, who still does them to this day um, and, and so I, I did that and, and that got me thinking about game plans and what you'd do if you were a coach but Colin Seary who was the, the general manager of the Swans at the time uh, got in contact with me uh, at one stage during the year and asked me to come down and, and speak to the Swans players at the MCG about what it's like to play in finals. And so I went down and spoke to them, spoke to the players. Uh, the next day, uh, Colin rang me and said, um, have you ever thought about being, getting back in the game as a coach? And um, I think it started from there. I went home and, and spoke to my girlfriend at that point, well, my fiance at that point. Um, we weren't married and um, we just bought a house, a brand new house in Melbourne. The, the boxes were in the kitchen, unpacked. Uh, it was going to be our forever home. And I walked in and so told Shelley well, that I had a phone call and ha how would it be if we moved to Sydney? The first time I was exposed to the, the Bloods culture, as it turned out to be, was uh, we went on a camp at Coffs Harbour at the start of 2003. and went up there and Ray McLean, who was working at leading teams at the time, uh, facilitated a session with the playing group. I think it was Heath James at the time, whose father Max played for the Swans, you know, and talked about why don't, we, you know, why don't we sort of put it under the banner of the Bloods um, and, and gave a bit of a history lesson to the players. And, and um, it just made sense. It, it, uh, the players really believed in it. They bought into it. They drove it and Rusey um, really gave them the keys to what they wanted the football club to look like. He always said, it's not my football club, it's your football club, where do you want to take it? I'm forever grateful. I mean, I was, I was sitting in, in uh, my office and Paul walked in on a, on a Wednesday morning at about quarter to seven in the morning um, and said, shut the door and he said, look, I'm out at the end of next year. This was halfway through 2009. In, in the next couple of hours, um, I was off the job of, of taking over as senior coach from Paul, uh, so it happened really quickly. But I was forever grateful that we had a year and a half to get a 